Well, a new Marquette Law School poll finds Hillary Clinton widening her lead over Donald Trump here in Wisconsin. The latest poll also looked at the race for U.S. Senate between Ron Johnson and Russ Feingold. The director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin, is back with us this afternoon. Hi, Charles. It's been a couple Good afternoon. Weeks. It's been yeah. lovely, had you? <laughs> so what is the headline from this uh, poll? Well, that Clinton expands the lead and, and also in the Senate race, John, uh, Feingold expands the lead a little bit. This is in line with what we were seeing throughout national and other state polls that following the Democratic convention and following the week after the convention when Donald Trump had a lot of controversy swirling around him, we saw the lead open up from about a one, almost a one point lead for Trump nationally right after the Republican convention to a 7.8 point Clinton lead in the average of polling now. Here in the state, we went up to a 10-point Clinton lead with registered voters and a 15-point lead with likely voters. And what's that distinction again, just for our viewers? Absolutely. The, the registered voter is just what it sounds like, people who are already registered or say they will register by Election Day. Likely voters, though, are those who tell us that they're absolutely sure they're going to vote in November. The good thing about that is, of course, you have to show up to vote so likely voters are better. But people's attitudes about for sure will they vote or not can change over time. So I would take the likely voters with a grain of salt right now because it can shift before election day. Whereas registered voters is a much firmer population. There won't be a lot of change there. And the neither don't know numbers, are those high? Are like 10%, 16%? They are indeed. 10 and we're 16, depending on which measure you look at. is very high if you look back at 2012 comparing Obama and Romney it was three to five percent and it reflects the unhappiness in both parties but since the conventions a bit more unhappiness with Republicans rather than Democrats. And we have those numbers too that, that people that aren't happy with their candidate. That's right. Uh, there are people who uh, are not voting for their party's nominee here, Republicans, only 79% going for Donald Trump. And that big neither and don't know, even when you give them Gary Johnson, the Libertarian, or Jill Stein, the, the Green, uh, still the, the Trump percentage is down. On the Democratic side, Clinton's at 90%, much better. Uh, and that shows that the Democratic convention did go a substantial way to unifying the party. Did she pick up a lot of... Bernie Sanders voters, you think? She's doing better with them, though they haven't all come home to her. But I think if the if you wanted the distinction, it would be that the Republican convention doesn't really seem to have moved things to you to party unity very much. The Democratic convention has moved it in that direction, even if there are still some Bernie supporters that are not yet convinced. Let's take a look at the poll <coughs> in the race for U.S. Senate. Yeah. What did it show? Well, here we have a six-point Feingold lead among registered voters, which expands to an 11-point lead among likely voters. What you're seeing with likely voters right now is Democrats are more united and are saying they are more likely to vote Republicans are saying they're not as likely to vote. Mm. In a lot of elections, it goes the other way. Republicans tend to be a bit older, to have more years of schooling. Both of those go with higher turnout. But this year, that demographic difference between the parties is getting swamped by the lack of enthusiasm, primarily at the top of the ticket, because Ron Johnson gets a bigger share of Republican voters than Donald Trump does. But because of the lower turnout of Republicans and the higher turnout of Democrats right now, uh, Feingold's lead goes up quite a bit from, well, five points from six to 11. Well, that's interesting. So there is some, yeah. there's going to be, there's going to be down ballot effects. There's a little bit of distance between the two. And in fact, the Senate race is looking closer than the presidential race. But turnout, if it drops off because of the top of the ticket, affects everybody down below. Three months to go. A lot of time. Lot of time. <laughs> All right, we will see you again sh soon, I'm sure. Indeed. Thanks, Charles. Thanks. Good to see you.